Okay, these are some of the products that I use. This is a malignant disulfide high pressure grease. This is a precision bore guide made for my rifle. You can get the universal ones at Sportsman, Cabela's, anything is better than nothing, okay? Nylon caliber specific brush. I do not use any copper, brass, any of that nature. Two reasons. One, they've done some tests. Once you take a brass brush or a copper brush through, you can't pull it back. And a lot of people go halfway, pull it back, and it actually can scratch the surface of your board. Typical gun oil. Rem oil is excellent. Any gun oil will do. This just happens to be hobbies. It, in a little applicator bottle is Butcher's Bore Shine. I like a Montana Extreme or Butcher's Bore Shine. Why? Because it works for me. The KG products work really, really well. Uh, Barnes has a really good copper solvent out. This is a combination because I'm lazy. I don't want to have to use a powder solvent and a copper solvent. This is a combination one and it works. Okay? If you're going to clean your rifle and you're going to do a, what do you want to say, a periodic maintenance, you know the best place to do it? At the range. You know why? Because when you get home, you're not going to want to do it. So if you do it at the range, you'll get it done. This is a bore mop. This is removable. Because I'm frugal, you can take your hot water applicator on your sink and with Dawn dish soap, you can wash it out, clean it. It's, this one's about shot, but it is a bore mop. This here, we call it the mini tampon. The way a Remington rifle locks up with dual lugs, there's a raceway cut down in there. There's really no way to get in there and clean this. This goes in back here, which we'll get into it, and you can clean that raceway. And the other thing is it also cleans the rails off really well, and you can clean the fire control mechanism at the same time. Just dry? Pardon me? Just put yes. It dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start over. Okay, you want to make sure, of course, the weapons are empty. I always tighten my muzzle brake on with a wrench because they will come off if you put them in a pack or if you use them a lot. The other thing is that I have here, typical carburetor cleaner. And the first thing I do is I spray the muzzle brake and let that set so it can be kind of acting. Now, I remove the bolt. Now, if you'll notice, I have scope caps on here. Trust me, put something on your scope. You get residue or you Because get what's going to happen, I have a very good friend of mine, I just put a $2,000 Night Force on his scope, didn't have a bore guide, and even if you did have a bore guide, he comes back here and of course he's cleaning his rifle with his buddy, yakking on, bink, right into the ocular lens, $700 fix and the scope was three days old. Brass, jag, caliber specific, okay? I prefer round patches because it applies even pressure on all sides of the bore. They're really tough to find anymore. The only place that I've, I've been able to find them is Sinclair's. Go to uh, Bortec online. All right, first thing I do, I remove the bolt of course, Take some butcher's bore shine, saturate a pad. Now, you see how hard that goes through? Now, if I were at home, I have a big magnifying glass. And what I would do is I would look under there and see if I've got any copper filings, whatever. And you'd be surprised what you might see there, okay? Now, because I'm frugal, turn the patch over, run it the other direction, and you'll feel it starting to get a little loose. All right, another wet patch. Oh, one of the most important things, coated, one piece rod, no stainless steel, no aluminum, none of that nature. Caliber specific. I know you're not going to like that. You say, well, I can buy one. If I'm shooting a 30 caliber, I can buy a 24 caliber rod and it works fine. It does, but when you apply pressure, it flexes on the inside and what does it rub? 
Alliance and groups. groups. <clears throat> so you want to get one as close as gotcha. possible. Yeah. Now, if you notice, I'm not cleaning from the muzzle end. Yeah. I'm doing everything from the action. Butcher's bore shine, saturate the brush. Twenty strokes, full strokes, and you will feel that rod get looser as you go. Now, the 26 nozzle, the 280 or the uh, 65 284 specifically. Okay. Measure your rod, and right about the breech, right where the end of the cartridge goes. On a 65284, it will form a carbon donut. And if you run a chronograph, every now and then you'll find one of the loads, you'll get a spike and one of them, will cut, you'll get a flyer. And nine times out of 10, it's because of that carbon ring. And so what you have to do is you'll sit there, you'll feel it when you get to that one spot and it'll be a little tight and you rub and rub. And sometimes it'll take maybe 100 strokes to get that out of with your rifle, okay? But now it, it's becoming very, very, very loose. Go back to your patches. Wet patch. Pardon me. It seems a lot easier to push it through. That See, and, and yeah, people don't realize, but it, it you're absolutely right. It is. Yep. So what should we be doing like after a weekend like this, where we shot a lot yesterday, we shot a lot today? Should the guns be clean now? Or I finish? think absolutely. We finish shooting. Absolutely. And we, you know. Because we have absolutely ideal conditions to shoot here, still we have very, very, there's it's very fine, it's dust here. I mean, very dusty, a lot dustier than what you would think. If you have any discoloration at all when you use that solvent, you'll go anywhere from black to light green to a dark green. Any discoloration at all means that the solution is still attacking the copper. So you come back with the brush, just keep going until they come out clean. Okay, now we got a nice clean bore, and what I do is if I had my magnifying glass, I would really look at this, okay, and believe it or not, <coughs> you can see some copper filings occasionally if you still have a rough bore. We're good and clean, you do that until you, the solution does, doesn't attack any more copper, then what I do is I take another patch, Put some solvent on it, okay, and I clean the muzzle off. Oh, that's the part I was going to tell you. How do we clean that? That thing gets stuck on there. Oh, yeah. That's because it's you ain't like cleaning enough. Take that out. This is the bore mop. Now, what can happen, no matter what's, whose solution you use, they will say to you that if you leave it in there, it won't etch the bore, blah, blah, blah. Well. I would be inclined to argue with that. If you ever have a bore that is really, really coppered and you have a really lot of problem getting it out, you can use sweets. And sweets, you can almost use it as smelling salts. So you do not want to leave that in there for more than about 10, 12 minutes maximum. So you use your bore mop, clean this out. Now, the little mini tampon, you go in there, you'll feel when you get down in that recess, hold down a little bit. Turn it, come back, clean the side rails, hey, the fire it. control mechanism, and I can't remember what those are called, but uh, again, if you want to be conservative, you can buy these, they come in little bundles, but you can literally take this under your hot water dispenser at home with some liquid detergent, and they're good for about three times. And again, I, I wipe the rails, make sure it's clean, Okay, now, the most important part, that's what is neglected the most. <laughs> this is the, the bolt. This is the part that made you famous in my world. First time I met you. I told you they had to use the, they had to use the wide angle lens when they filmed me doing this. All right, people say, why is a bolt, bolt fluid? John, why is a bolt fluid? Just for you. I'll tell you how it started out. Does it look good? Same reason a woman wears its garters. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> it looks sexy. Yeah. But they found out, not only does it lighten the bolt, but it also plays a part of you don't have near as much surface contact 
when you're moving the bolt back and forth. So you've got less surface contact so the bolt moves smoother. The other thing, and most importantly, there's a place for the dirt and the debris to go. This is the part that's neglected the most, and I don't know, the light isn't very good in here, but it's going to be hard to see. Well, at home, what I do is I clamp my bolt in a vise. You don't have to have one. Ejector plung plunger right here. Extractor. Okay? This here has to move. When the gun is in battery and you have a shell loaded in there, when it's in battery and you're ready to fire, that plunger is seated flush with the bolt base. Well, what happens every time you fire it, you get microscopic particles of brass around that plunger because it's recessed. All right, what you do, you squirt a little carburetor cleaner down in the bottom, holding the bolt like this with the plunger at the bottom and you work that in and out. And if you can get enough fluid in the bottom, you tilt this up a little bit, but you don't want it running into the firing pin hole. When you push that in and out, what it does is it sucks some of that fluid down in there. So when you push the plunger in, what happens, the fluid has to come out and it takes all the microscopic particles out. So then what I do is I work that free a couple times, take it outside, and I shake the excess fluid out of it. And then I take one drop of oil, Put one on there and put the plunger uh, on the plunger or on the extractor. Make sure that that slides in and out. If you get in real dirty conditions, what will happen to that ejector plunger is that will stick in there. If you have a problem when you open your bolt, take your bolt out of battery and it extracts the cartridge fine, but the cartridge just stays in there, it's because that plunger is stuck in there. This is one of the most neglected things in a bolt. Very few people, and then I, then I see people all the time too, what they do is they'll sit there with the oil can and dump oil down the firing pit hole. That's an absolute no-no. Put a cartridge in, you go into battery, this is how it locks, okay? There is a surface or a recess cut in here that holds the lugs in place. Now, with your grease, the back side, Backside. All right, one other place. Up here by your bolt handle, that's the cam that breaks the shell from the walls of the chamber. You put a little dab of grease there. You can use lithium grease? Yes. Mm -hmm. When you insert this into your rifle, it isn't going to do any good what we just did. Take the safety off. Pull the trigger, push the bolt as far as forward as you can and hold it and work the bolt up and down. Now you say, why do I do that? If I go in the battery just like this, I pick up the fire control mechanism and I pick up the firing pin, what does that do? It holds the bolt back. The first time I close it, it just wipes the grease off on the outside and does not go down in those raceways. That's the key to it, pull the trigger, Hold the board forward. The only trouble with lithium is some grades of it are not high pressure. Okay? All right, put a little bit of grease on the threads. I, you're gonna laugh when I to wipe my whole gun down. A lot of times what I'll use is pledge furniture polish. It works great on the stocks, work good on the on the weapon and everything. I know people use WD-40 all the time. I've heard of that one. Okay, WD-40. <laughs> Number one is not a lubricant. Right. Okay? Do you know what WD-40 stands for? I've never used it, but I've just heard Water it. displacement, and it's the 40th recipe. That's where the name came from. Now, if, you get, if you're in camp in the backcountry, and you get into a rainstorm, and your gun gets wet and everything, the best thing to do is bring it into the tent, turn it upside down, take the shells and everything out of it, and you can literally, don't get any on your lenses, but you can spray your gun down with it, and what it will do, it will not lubricate, but what it does, it displaces the water and it'll stop it from rusting. Are you ready to get the best big game magazine in the West? Then it's time to get Hunting Illustrated. The HI editorial team is the best in the business. Oh, we'll give you the best tips and tactics to help you bag your game. Articles from Ted Nugent and Eva Shockey will definitely keep you entertained. With trophy stories from people like you, we'll show you some of the biggest game to hit the dirt. We have gear reviews of the hottest equipment available. Go to our website to get your free trial subscription. Like our Facebook page for weekly gear giveaways. Hunting Illustrated. Get it today.